It's absolutely absurd. The president uh, lost his older brother, Fred, to the disease of alcoholism. He understands that this is a disease and not a moral failing. Um, that's number one. Um, I, I, I think things have spun out of control with this. Um, we still have the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act, which is very much supported by the administration and Congress, which was passed by, with bipartisan support last year um, to increase education, uh, treatment, and access. But we're missing a bigger point here. The failing is, right now, is that we have inadequate treatment centers across the country yep. that will take you in, you know this, that will take you in for 28 days and spit you out. Okay, for instance, at addiction campuses, we bring people in, we treat them for 30 days, and then we have a continuum of care, and we have a balanced life curriculum, we have um, uh, an amazing alumni program, that's a differentiator. But we're not doing anybody any service by bringing them in and then just dumping them out. It's a revolving door, right? It's the cookie cutter approach, you know that. Right, absolutely, so yeah, that's one thing too. And by the way, you're looking to get 28 days. A lot of times they say, hey, your insurance is out, you're out in a week. Sorry, uh, maybe there's a part-time place you can go to in between uh, going back to drugs, sadly, and then checking in once a week. But Andrew, in the big picture, it's very expensive to have these rehabs as, worth, as, as worthwhile as most of them are. How do you get over that cost? And is there anything in the Ryan plan that addresses this? Well, I think you know funding is critical, right? We have to be able to treat everybody, whether it's it's uh, poor folks. Listen, when I got clean and sober 12, 13 years ago, I didn't have a penny in my pocket. There's ways to treat people, but it has to be the right sort of treatment. And so the funding is critical. And all it, based on the Ryan plan, what I see is that we're turning this, the power over to the states, not not immediately, 2020, and they're on the front lines. You look at West Virginia, look at Ohio, look at New Hampshire. Okay, I want the I want the governors of those states and the legislators of those states to make the decision on how best to treat folks, how best to spend those dollars. They're on the front lines, and and here's the other point. So the mandate for Medicaid um, to treat you know uh, substance use disorder, mental health issues. Okay, the mandate goes away, supposedly. The mandate goes away in 2020. What politician is gonna cut spending when every constituent in their district, in their, in their state, is affected by the opioid epidemic? That would be politically untenable. You're not getting reelected if you cut spending for treatment. Uh, absolutely, and uh, that's one big thing, and I think a lot of people are concerned about that. I know Governor, K Governor Kasich said, I got a huge drug problem in my state, and this is gonna hurt it. In reality, you're getting block, uh, block grants to do it, but you gotta act responsibly. Because a lot of times you get those block grants, people say, well, you know, I'm gonna rebuild the road and then open up a rec center instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, Andrew McKenna, thanks so much, and I think your story is very important. I'm glad you keep telling. My pleasure, thank you very much, Brian. All right, coming up straight ahead, a bombshell report.